first time in my my memory that the Go Go's have been used as reentry music here on the program. Welcome back to the show, Linda Macbeth. Nice to have you on the board. Well, the Union of uh, BC Municipalities holds its annual general meeting in Vancouver this week. No doubt there will be much discussion of the provincial government's plan for a municipal auditor general. It's a concept my next guest is solidly in support of. Shachi Curl is the BC director of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business and a lifelong Go-Go's fan. Uh, Shachi, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, Lyndon. I know that was especially <laughs> for me. I'm sure you have all their albums. Them and them and the Bangles. Don't make me start singing Vacation or <laughs> don't. Manic Monday for no, you. No, don't do that. Don't I do that. Do it, I promise. <laughs> I'm sure you would. All right, uh, Shachi, why do we need a municipal auditor general? Well, Sean, we've got 188 municipalities and regions across BC, and uh, how much how much do we know about what's really going on in terms of how effectively uh, they're spending your taxpayer dollars? That's the question I put to most British Columbians, and. Uh, most would say we don't know so much. We have a sense of uh, who's keeping an eye and uh, who's who's a watchdog on things in Ottawa with the Federal Auditor General. John Doyle does the job here uh, and keeps an eye on how Victoria's spending money. But uh, at that municipal level where, you know, a lot of taxpayer dollars are spent, we don't have that same level of oversight. What we have is, in essence, we know the checkbook is being balanced. We have what's called financial or fiscal reporting, so it's like we spent this much and this is how much it was spent on and it all adds up to zero at the end of a column at the end of the balance sheet. But what we don't know is whether or not we're really getting value for dollars on those expenditures. And I would say that most taxpayers would uh, like to see a little bit more of that. Yeah, I had Greg Moore on the show a few weeks ago talking about this. Uh, he's a, a mayor of Poco, of course, but also vice president of the UBCM. And he said, he, you know, I'm not necessarily opposed to this, but he said, not sure what the problem is we're trying to solve here because we are required by law to balance the books every year. They are audited by an independent auditor to make sure that uh, everything is on the up. And up. So why do we need this extra level? Well, again, it's about scrutiny and it's ensuring that, that taxpayer dollars are being spent effectively. It really is about the issue of efficacy. We've never said, you know, there's hanky-panky going on here and, and those dollars are, are not being spent in the way they're being reported to have been spent. It's more about are we undertaking projects and municipal spending, operating spending, capital spending, as well as we could be, and are we comparing what benchmarks should be for same-sized municipalities? You know, you may have a lot of smaller districts, regions, smaller cities, uh, where they don't necessarily have the money or the tax base to go out and get a consultant and say, well, what's the best way we could be doing uh, garbage collection or recreational operation uh, without having to spend a lot of money? And so one of the things a municipal auditor general could do is identify best practices. You know, Community X is doing a really good job here, and if you're a municipality that's the same size, same population and tax base, maybe this could be a good idea for you as well. It really is about giving taxpayers uh, a better sense and a bit more security uh, in terms of knowing that their their dollars being, are being spent as well as possible. You know, I, I mentioned UBCM meeting this week. What uh, What level of support do you sense out there right now among local politicians for this idea? Oh, what a question. You know, I, I met with uh, Mayor Moore a couple of weeks ago, and, and he put the same question to me. Why do we need this? Well, that's perhaps a polite way of pushing back. I've, I've heard everything, Sean, on the spectrum from I just resent the idea of a municipal auditor general to this deeply offends me. These are true statements from our sitting mayors. Um, our argument would be that if you're already doing everything as well and as effectively as you could be, then, then what's to worry about? What's the problem? Um, but uh, it does seem to be rubbing a lot of local leaders the wrong way. Uh, and part of it has been there have been questions over the summer as long as the concept of this municipal auditor general office hadn't been completely defined there were some fears and concerns that this would be someone who would come in and second guess or Monday morning quarterback the spending decisions that they're making or be able to make comments on how much they can tax, taxation issues, or jurisdiction issues. And, of course, none of those things uh, are applicable at the provincial or the federal level. This is basically someone who comes in and looks at projects looks at the way spending is going and says, well, based on what I'm seeing, uh, here's what I think is going well, and here's what I think could be going better. And so 
it really is now about getting local leaders on side. What we saw in the last week on Tuesday, um, the minister responsible for municipalities, Ida Chong, did finally issue um, a policy paper. They're called white papers and kind of did define some of what a municipal auditor general would and wouldn't be doing. And she assured municipalities that there would be no duplication of services, so things that they're already doing to report their fiscal expenditures won't be duplicated or repeated, and uh, and that this would be a focus on performance and value-for-dollar audits, not just making sure that, that the columns are lining up and adding up to zero. And so it's good to have that clarity. I'm hoping it'll be enough to bring the temperature down a little bit on the amount of pushback that we've seen around a municipal auditor general. Here's a line from Ida Chong, the Community uh, Services Minister. The municipal auditor general will not make or overrule Policy decisions of elected officials, such as tax rates or land use, uh, will not call into question the merits of local government program policies or objectives, make binding recommendations or impose requirements, or duplicate or displace current accountability requirements, such as local governments hiring independent auditors for annual financial audits. Obviously, she's trying to assuage some of the uh, the doubts out there, but if, if those limitations are there, does that undercut what you're hoping this office would do, Shaji? Yes. Not because I think what we want a municipal auditor to do is simply shine a light on what's going on and really bring some public awareness around what's going on. Again, how much oversight is there really at the municipal level right now? Sean, how much does the press gallery in Victoria have the time or the wherewithal to look at what's happening in 160 communities? Yep. Uh, don't even get me started on the constraints of uh, you know local papers and local reporters in, in those communities. So you know it's it's quite a daunting task, and there's the old saying that nobody pays attention until somebody starts paying attention. I would not make this accusation in any way, shape, or form, but I wonder if this perhaps doesn't have more to do with the idea that some unflattering reports may come to light for some municipalities than it has to do with the actual function of the office. Well, of course, yeah, because, you know, if you, some mayors and councils have their pet projects, and I've seen a number of them go sideways in uh, many communities I've, I've covered, um, and, and those, those aren't necessarily captured by the, the audited financial books at the end of the year. No, I mean, the audited financial books, again, at the end of the year, simply state that the money was spent, and this is what it was spent on. There's no analysis. There's no looking at, really, yeah. was this the best way of doing it? Could it not have been done better? Shachi, great to talk to you. Uh, so are you going to be out there battling for this at uh, UBCM this week? <laughs> as well as I've been battling this. <laughs> well, you're, wear your armor. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll definitely have shields up. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Take care. Shachi Carl, BC Director of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. Out.